So is full-time music income a myth? This is something that uh, I think about all the time because it is the only way that I make music income is, or, or that I live, uh, is by music income. I don't have any other incomes. I don't work another job other than uh, that doesn't have anything to do with music. And so I will be including jobs that have something to do with music, like uh, jobs where you work at a school or at a company or something like that, that is a music job. So uh, just because you get a salary from something doesn't mean you're not making a music income. It is music income. So uh, what I'm going to be doing on this broadcast is talking a lot about just different ways that I make music income and different ways that people want to know about making music income on this channel. And uh, I, I'm just going to hit them one by one and I'm going to take questions from those who are watching. Um, I'll also be answering questions in the comments if you have any questions about music incomes that you uh, that I don't talk about or that you just have specific questions. Be happy to take those as we go along. So let's get right into it. And remember, if you are wanting to know more about music income and different things, you can get free stuff at makemusicincome.com slash free. Just go there and pick up free eBooks and all that kind of stuff. So that's what that is. All right, so let's get back to this. Is music, uh, making music full-time a myth? Um, well, obviously it is not, uh, only because I am right here talking on this channel and uh, I don't make my music income from this channel, at least, you know, not a, a good part of it. So, uh, but this is one of my income streams and it could be one of your income streams. One of the things I wanna talk about on this channel at some point is how you, can build your own channel, your own following. We see lots of people doing this. Uh, Steve and I and people on our Discord are uh, are doing this. They are starting their own channels, their own Instagrams, and they are giving out information in the same way I do or that uh, my podcast partner Steve Bedall does or anybody else you know online like uh, Jesse or Clint or... Um, Daniel or anybody who works in the space uh, of some kind of licensing or something like that. So uh, that's not going to help me. So anyway, um, everything looks good on the picture and everything. So let's move right on in to the first one that I want to talk about today. And this is may not be my biggest income right now. Um, maybe it's yours or maybe it's one that you are working on or that you have questions about. This is one that people ask me about the most. It's the um, income that people uh, want to know the most about on this channel. They seem to um, want to dive into this, and this is the one that is, it's exciting, I mean, to have your music in film and television and in commercials and in gaming. Everybody would love to have their music in sync licensing. And so um, this is one of the things that I've been pursuing for about five years, and um I detail all of that in my Getting in Sync ebook, which is at makemusicincome.com slash getting in sync if you want to take a look at that. And you'll you can find that in the below. I don't have um, I'll have the link in the below after this broadcast, but sync licensing is that thing that people are wanting to do. So how do you get into it and can it become a major income for you, a major way to support your family? Well, um, I will tell you right now that mine is just starting. Um, I am not in a phase where I'm thinking about getting into sync licensing. I'm not in a phase where I'm hoping I get signed by a sync library. I already have been signed by many sync libraries and I'm working for them now. I'm not in a phase where I'm waiting to see if something gets placed on a TV show. Stuff is getting placed on TV shows and getting pitched to TV shows and getting found by TV shows and, and other opportunities. That's happening. I'm not at a place where I'm waiting for money. I've seen the first checks on my BMI checks, on my uh, PRO. I have seen the, the plays and I've seen the payments for those plays. Um, I have also seen my first synchronization payments, which come directly from the library. And I've seen that now from two different libraries. And uh, not again, not thousands of dollars yet. Nothing that is going to move the needle on paying rent necessarily. But it, they are enough to pay bills. They are enough to eat. They are enough uh, when they come in to do some things. So they are starting to bring in, sync licensing is starting to bring in uh, some income to me. But 
I think you have to think about sync licensing as a very long game. You cannot think of it as something that is going to support you on a weekly or monthly or even quarterly basis. It's going to be um, something that you do and you've got to do it for a long time. You know, a lot of people ask me, how in the world do you make a living in music? How do you, how do you make full-time music income and it not be a myth, it not be some, some uh, dream that you have that you want to do? Well, the answer is you keep doing it. And this is one of the hardest things to convince people to do is to keep after it and keep working. And sync licensing is definitely one of those things that you've just got to keep at. You've got to keep working on it because if you don't, um, it's, it, it's like anything in music. Any of the things I'm going to talk about here, if you stop, if you stop doing it, you won't get paid. If you stop your job today, will you get paid next week or in two weeks? No, you have to keep going to your job. And in this case, music is my job. And, uh, and so I look at sync licensing very much like um, going to college or, or um, preparing for a career in something. You start small. You start trying to figure out how to do it. And that's what I did about five years ago. I just decided I'm going to get into this. I know I have a lot of music that would fit into television and film and, and advertising. I want to make these songs. I want to put them out. So I formed a whole company called Positive Spin Songs, and I started taking all these songs that I had written, producing them well, and then trying to find music libraries that would be interested in them. And I did that, and I found the libraries, and now there is some income coming in. And So why do I talk about this first if this is only 5% of my income or less? Well, these are things that people are interested in. Sync licensing uh, is one of the pe reasons people watch this channel. They uh, have tried other ways to get music to music libraries or get seen and heard in the sync licensing business, and it hasn't worked. And so uh, I am not the end-all, be-all on sync licensing. Um, flip over to Jesse's channel uh, at Sync My Music. That dude is the guy uh, that you should be watching uh, along with this channel. But Jesse is uh, the OG in sync licensing on, um, on, on YouTube. And uh, I've interviewed him on this channel several times. And uh, absolutely, uh, you want to be. Uh, and I've been on his channel. And so if you're really trying to get into sync licensing, then you need to make sure you're watching me, but you're also watching Steve Bedall, and you're also watching uh, Jesse, and you're also watching Clint Music. Clint is, Anthony Clint is really killing it and, and makes a living in it. And so uh, both him and Jesse are where I want to be eventually. And But one of the reasons that you would follow this channel is that maybe I'll be a little bit more applicable to you just because I am like you. I am someone who decided to try to do um, music licensing for television and film. And so I, I kind of... Um, I kind of jumped into it, and you can kind of watch as I do this. Um, Lodge Cove says, uh, true, it's a long game, speaking of sync licensing. Wish I had kept the pedal on the floor. It takes a while before getting accepted and seeing those first royalty checks. Can easily get discouraged during that waiting phase, for sure. Uh, it's very easy to get discouraged while you're in this uh, startup phase of, of trying to get your stuff in libraries. And folks, it takes not a few songs, not... 10 or 50 or a hundred try a thousand and I know this I've got I've got I've got I've got probably close to 200 songs now that are into the light into sync libraries and then lots uh, hundreds more in stock but um, we'll get to stock licensing in a minute but um, sync licensing is going to take lots of songs it's going to take the pedal to the middle there is uh, someone in our discord um, I think he goes by the name Jelly Crackers or something like that. But dude is pumping out 300 songs a year. 300 songs a year. I, I'm trying to get, um, you know, around 100 done now uh, a year, which is a lot, right? 300 is what the people who are making full-time income in sync licensing only are putting out there. So if this is something that you're interested, if sync licensing is a focus for you, then uh, then you're going to have to think about it. Uh, Giovanni says, that is amazing. However, I think it is so sad. We are the only professionals that have to play the long game in order to get a decent income. 
I'm not so sure I agree with that. I think doctors have to play a pretty long game to get a decent income. They have to go to school for a long, long time, 10 or more years before they are able to make the big bucks as a doctor. And so in the same way, if we want to make 100000 or more a year in sync licensing, we're going to have to stick it out for the long game and prepare and grow and be that good as well. Um, Lucas says, I'm living this situation myself and think I was very lucky, but yesterday I cashed in $50 for only 20 seconds of guitar parts and now I'm full of commissions. Great. So, um, okay, well, we're going to get to AI. As a matter of fact, uh, Willie Jr. says, I think it will be a myth soon when AI can generate good music. I think we have a couple years left. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Steve and I just shot our uh, episode, our, our podcast episode for Monday, and we talk all about AI and what we think. So make sure you guys are watching us on Monday for uh, our talk about AI because we talk a lot about AI. Um, so Arco says, just a question, what's the upfront sync fees you get? Is it greater than BMI checks you get now? Um, I would say it's around the same, but the, uh, the upfront payments are very sporadic. You don't have really any idea when they're coming. It, it probably has to do with when the library gets paid and when they are able to pay out to you. I've seen two months in a row from one library, but it was only six or seven bucks. So, uh, and remember, you're getting 50% of what they're getting, and they have lots of stuff. I, I, would, I would only imagine this is going to rise as I get more, uh, more, um, more placements in sync licensing. So, sync income, the upfront fee is not exactly upfront. I've been uh, with both the libraries that I got up upfront fees just recently. I've been with them for two years, so I'm not sure how upfront these fees are, but they are other kinds of fees besides royalty payments. They are sync royalty payments that are paid uh, to from the library to you um, that they that they get from the client or from the show versus performance royalties is what you're getting from BMI and your PRO. So that is, uh, you know, the sync licensing world is is a uh, is a, a wild game. But uh, keep focused here because this is what I am. I'm probably more focused on sync licensing than just about anything else, even though I do. That's not my main incomes, my main music incomes. But uh, it, it is something that I think is interesting and I think it's going to be a long term income stream for me. All right. So let's move on there um, and move on into another thing. And by the way, just remember, um, I did just finish and release a whole new ebook on this it's called getting in sync and you can find that at makemusicincome.com slash getting in sync if you want to go take a look at that and uh, find out my whole story about sync licensing it's all there all right so let's talk about something else that is a, a, usually a hot topic on this channel and other income channels because sync licensing and stock music licensing are both what we call passive incomes they you put the music into the libraries and then you just sit back and wait for those bucks to roll in. But the problem is with stock music, um, if there is a um, if there is a music medium that is going to be affected by AI, stock music might be the one uh, that is affected. However, as Steve and I talk about on Monday in our podcast, uh, AI uh, is not what Motion Array and Artlist, the higher quality stock music libraries want. So uh, they are really focused on the human element and really focused on um, higher quality music. And let me tell you something, folks. AI does not happen to be higher quality. It's, it's lower quality. It is repetitive. It is not that um, uh, unique. And it's not that uh, interesting because it's just uh, AI only goes off what it can see and hear. So I'm not sure that we have to really worry about that, at least certainly not in the, uh, in the, in the current time. Um, our, uh, let's see, uh, Ronan says, sync seems to be trending more towards actual artistry, so I don't think AI will be an issue or get in the way of sync artists. Yes, and high-end stock music like Motion Array, like Artlist, is also trending towards actual artistry. Both of those, if you look at Steve's latest talk where he talked directly with Motion Array people, they were saying they are looking for more real players, real vocals, real uh, guitars, all this kind of stuff. AI is not going to be providing that. AI is going to be just cranking out uh, electronic type of music for 
uh, that it, it hears and, and maybe with samples and things. It's not going to be providing the kind of artistry that you're talking about here. So I totally, totally agree. Um, Lodge Code says about sync licensing upfronts, also assume the library are getting something upfront and that your deal assigns you a portion they don't always write. And most of uh, that I've seen so far has been in the back end, the PRO royalties in sync. So, um, so getting back to stock though, I, I think that stock music still can be an income. Um, it's only about 3% of my income. So again, not one of my top incomes. This whole uh, video is about can you make a full-time income? And my full-time income uh, does not come from stock. Now, to be honest with you, I don't put my full-time work into stock either. Uh, my friend Stevie B, he puts tons of work into each and every song that he puts out on um, these stock music libraries. And guess what? The dude has made some thousand and five thousand dollar months because he really, really focuses on it. He also focuses on music for Artlist, and those that brings him a a, a good amount uh, per year. So those kind of things, um, I, I think, uh, are are things that stock music license and there are other people who will maybe watching this now um who are who are bringing in uh some things tony says uh, been on pond five with 290 tracks built up over the last 12 months but few views and no sales um yeah tony oh uh, how much are you um how much are you pricing them at um, are you are you pricing them at five bucks or are you pricing them at 50 bucks or 25 bucks um it seems like that the only way to get uh, Pond5 to work is to make it a penny game right now. Uh, I know they are moving to, and, and if you don't know what Pond5 is, Pond5 is another one of these um, stock music licensing companies. It's a great place to get started. I've done a video about it. And, uh, and so Tony says he is charging $20 per song. I would, just as a if you want to just do a, a and listen, Tony, I think you can do tests all the time on stock music licensing and, and Pond5 is a great one to test because you can go through and just in one swoop change everything from $20 to $5. And it might be an interesting experiment for you to do this month in March and see if it picks up. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, you jumpstart the algorithm a little bit in your favor. And I'm telling you, uh, it seems like Pond5 is a $5 market. But to be honest with you, uh, I, I am in the same spot with you where I've got close to the same amount of, 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 of songs up there, both originals and uh, covers, I mean, uh, uh, public domain and different things like that. Now, it, it depends if you are making the type of music that people want at these stock music libraries. And, and I, this is one of the where this is one of the places I fall down. I do not create corporate music all the time. I do not create poppy rock type of music like my friend Stevie B makes that makes him a lot of money on Motion Array, or at least it did last year. So yeah, uh, try that, Tony. And I think you might just, I mean, it's an experiment, dude. What, what do you got to lose, really? I mean, if you're making uh, very little now, why not just try something and see how it works? I know that last year I made the most I ever made in Pond5 by doing five dollars um a pop i go back and forth i'll put stuff up back up to twenty dollars twenty five dollars and stuff and and i think it was at nine dollars recently and i've gone back to five just for this month to see what happens so you just got to keep working on that to make stock music uh work and you also have to be like uh like arco says probably trying to get in a, in a library like art list um and and i think that um art list is one of those libraries that's really looking for more artists so it's going to depend if you are an artist whether you get in a stock music library like art list uh, it's very high end and they're really looking for artists take the l out of art list and it makes art artist and that's what they are looking for on art list uh, mix club told me uh it says uh, from what pond five told me years ago sales equals more views so that's why i think if you price them down at five dollars or at least you do experiments where you go back and forth pricing everything at five dollars, and and uh, it it kind of stimulates the the algorithm a little bit to get more people seeing your stuff. So, if you are looking for a, a place uh, to go with your stock music, I would definitely uh, look at uh, Pond Five as a starting point. Not that it's the place where you're going to make tons of money, but it is something to look at. And um, 
speaking of stock music licensing, I also have another ebook, my first ebook, which is very popular, which is the stock market. And this is basically kind of a directory where, why, and how to submit your music to stock music licensing. Basically just tells you all the different places that are looking for stock music and where you could submit to and the exact links to all of the libraries. Um, and this is not a stock music li uh, video only, so I'm gonna stop there. I will talk though about the back end of stock music, which is Content ID. A lot of people ask me questions about this, and so I thought I would cover this today. Content ID was my second most uh, income off stock music in 2022, and it's not even done. We just got the November numbers, and uh, so I don't even have December numbers, but it's it's right behind Motion Array as what brought me the most uh, stock music licensing income. And if you're unfamiliar with Content ID, Content ID is, um, it, it's like BMI or ASCAP, it's the PRO basically of, of uh, YouTube. It listens to every video and it makes sure that the person who owns the music of that video is getting paid. Um, I had some good months on that. I've had a couple of checks that have been $100, $200 this year, or in, I should say in 2022. Um, I have a, the big, I had a video that had almost, I think it has a million views now, and they did not monetize it. So all that money, and it was only my song in it. So that paid me a lot of money through Content ID. And when I say a lot of money, I mean four or $500, but still, uh, that was a big part of stock music licensing. So these two things, stock music licensing, content ID, I think they go together. I almost not sure I see a reason to do stock music licensing if you're not also going to put things into content ID. I have a video about um, content ID and, and identify, which is the company I use. You can just find that on my channel. I'll try to put these links down in the bottom, but I have tons of video on stock music licensing and tons of video on content ID and tons of videos on stock on sync licensing. So you just have to go to the channel and look at the playlist and you'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just put the playlist below for all of these things. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're interested in stock music licensing and making money with that, take a look at this book ebook, uh, The Stock Market, and I will put that down in the uh, in the description below, or you can just go to makemusicincome.com and you'll see all the eBooks and all the information. It's makemusicincome.com. Okay, cool. So uh, we've talked about sync licensing. We've talked about stock licensing. Neither one of those, we still haven't gotten to what brings me the majority of my income. And we're not gonna get to it now. We're gonna get to Spotify and DSPs. And again, I bring this up because this is the next most discussed thing that people wanna know about and if they should be putting their music from their stock libraries up to uh, Spotify, if they should be putting their sync licensing stuff up to Spotify. So I wanna talk about that today and about the income there. Um, so uh, Got Reality says, where can I buy your book you just mentioned? Uh, just go to makemusicincome.com uh, and you'll see it, both books are there and all the free books are there and all that kind of stuff. You can just go to makemusicincome.com and you'll see everything there. Thanks for asking. Um, any other questions here? ISO says, Eric, I am having some decent success with Pond5 subscription service. I've had two sales, one per month from subscription, both trap beats. I'm seeing a little bit from that uh, Pond5 stock music subscription income. Uh, not much though. Uh, Pond5 is, is um, a great place to put everything, I think, but not necessarily someplace where um, I think you're going to see a lot of that. All right, well, let's get back on track here and back down to Spotify and DSPs. Now, I'd be interested in what you have to say about this because I think that Spotify is, uh, this is something that I'm really pushing this year. I'm really focusing on trying to get as many songs out to Spotify um, as you know, in a recent uh, video about Spotify and DSPs, and when we say DSPs, we mean digital um, service providers, digital music service providers. And um, these are basically places like Apple Music and Tidal and, and uh, uh, all the other YouTube music and all the places that put your music out. And the, if you're wondering, can you put music from sync licensing out? Can you put music for stock music licensing? And can you then double dip and put those on Spotify and all the other DSPs through someplace like um, like DistroKid. Absolutely you can. And uh, especially stock music licensing. Most of stock music licensing, 
except for some if you sign a deal with some place like Artlist or or a, a contract of some kind where they are putting the songs that you give them up on uh, on the DSPs. You can put anything you want from stock music licensing. It's all non-exclusive. So that means it's all yours to do as you want. And you can put that into Spotify and upload it through whatever distributor you like to use. DistroKids, CD Baby, Amuse, wh whoever you like to use, you can put your music up there. Um, I think that uh, sync licensing is a little different. You have to be careful with what you put up there and you have to make sure that your uh, your your library that you're working with in sync doesn't mind if you put your stuff up to Spotify. Sometimes they do. Uh, for the first year or two of my sync licensing, none of my libraries cared. In recent months, they've started to come to me and tell me all the new stuff does cannot go to Spotify because all the new stuff needs to, uh, we're putting that out or BMG is putting that or Universal or whoever they are working with uh, on the library side. They're and they're they're doing that themselves and they want that. They want that money. They want that want that uh, that that end. And also, uh, content ID comes into play with licensing too. And sometimes you have to be careful with sync licensing and content ID. If you can put uh, your sync stuff into content ID, and you usually can't. But again, it's just going to depend on your library. But uh, Spotify and 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 all the online stores to me is more about your legacy. Is just about as much about much about making pennies and, and dollars from um, your sales of streams, but um, is it is about making sure that all of your work is up somewhere. I think you can put stuff in sync licensing and stock licensing all day long, but if you're not getting stuff into these libraries or you are getting them into Pond5 and you have 290 tracks, those 290 tracks, why are they not on Spotify? Why are they not on Apple Music? where they can at least be found and be making you some money. And you say, but Eric, I'm not making tons of Spotify money. Well, I would bet you it's because number one, you are not putting anything up to Spotify. And number two, you're not pushing what you have on Spotify. And so I think, uh, and, and I say Spotify to mean all the DSPs just because Spotify is the biggest and Spotify uh, has the most tools to promote yourself and promote your music that you have up there. But I think this is one of the ones that gets ignored um, by producers. If you're a, a composer or a producer, sometimes this gets ignored. Um, let's see, anybody else? Uh, Mark is here today and says, full-time music income is a reality for me thanks to streaming and online radio. It's not easy, it's not overnight, but it can be done. Branching into stock and sync for 2023. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, streaming and online radio. So there, here is someone who is making uh, income on streaming and mark is uh if i remember right does a lot of playlist stuff and puts a ton of music out on streaming and really focuses on the streaming world and that it takes a while tony says uh totally agree on legacy yeah i, I think this is something of course those of us who are older are probably more interested in legacy than those of you who are younger if you're in your 20s or 30s you're like ah i got time those of us who are not in our 20s and 30s are going, I don't know how much time I have. And I want to get all of that music up so it can be found after I am gone. And I think that's where Spotify uh, really shines, is not just as a music uh, place to put your music, but as a place to be found, so as a place for legacy, as a place for uh, libraries to come and hear what you're doing, and just a great way to be heard and, and seen. And so uh, this is what I am really uh, focusing on for uh for this year i've so far i've released about 40 songs on uh, up to my various brands on um on, on spotify this year and i've got and i'm trying for about 100 so because uh, i've got a bunch of stuff that's just unreleased that's sitting in stock music libraries and the sync libraries and they're able to be put on spotify and that's what i will be doing all right so let's move on now to something that uh I still make a good amount of money on, and this is a bigger part of my uh, income, and it has been a six-figure amount for me over the past 20 years, and that is music production. If I, This is one of the things that I just continue to, to beg people. 
say, listen, you are making all of these music productions for yourself. You're putting them on Pond5. You've got 290 songs, Tony, on, on, on Pond5. You've got, and, and those of you who are making stuff for sync, if you're getting stuff into sync music libraries, you're making quality recordings, my friend. So you really need to be getting your music services out to people, you, if, if that's interesting to you. But if you're looking at this video and you're going, how do I make full-time music uh, income? This is one of the ways. You've got, at some point, and, and, and this is not what we want to do. We don't want to sit around and make music for other people. We want to make music for ourselves and for our own legacy and for our own brands and for our own libraries. And that's all well and good. But at some point, you also... You're watching this video saying, I need full-time music income. Well, one of the ways that um, you can pretty much guarantee that is start handing out business cards and start handing out demos. Let people go to your Pond5 and see how much quality that you have there and start offering your services to people uh, as a music producer. I think this is one of the things um, that everybody watching this channel is really focusing on being a better music producer, but almost uh, not as many people are... Um, are trying to serve others. And if you want to make music income, yes, you can serve these libraries all day. But these libraries get a pretty good deal, whether it's a sync library um, and a sync licensing library that's going to put stuff to film and TV, and you send them money, music that they get for free to use and to make 50% of, pretty good deal for them. Stock music licensing, these are libraries also. You're making the music before they hear it. You're making this music for them to have, for them to, um, to use at their will, and, and they're making more than 50% off of your music. You're doing all of this for free for these libraries. Why? And when you make stuff for Spotify, there's somebody taking a piece of that. Uh, when you work with DistroKid, you pay a one-year uh, fee up front, like 35 bucks or something like that. And then you get 100% of everything that sells on Spotify. But still, you're helping the Spotify and Apple Music brands to have more music up there. Music production is no different. It's just the client, except here's the, here's the difference. You're being paid to work for that client. You're not just giving them music production uh, for free and then hoping you're going to make some music in the background or, or in the back end. You're, you're, you are making music up front Talk about upfront. There's no better upfront than a, a a deposit on a music product, and I think this is something that um, you know someone like uh, like Rhett is very familiar with. This he actually has a channel called the Mix Club, and he says if you want to make money, Eric is spot on. Get your music on a platform. A buck is a buck. Um, but uh, Rhett is a person who mixes and gets paid. I doubt he mixes people for free. So I think this is something that you've got to think about. Music production is one of those things that, uh, you know, we, I teach at a school and our main job is to get people to graduate and be able to know Pro Tools and be able to have skills where they can go work for clients and get jobs doing music. Um, I would love to just sit around and compose all day long. And that's all, no clients, nothing else, no students, nothing. But that's not the reality. The reality is I need, I need a good income. And my in, in order to make music my income, I've got to keep doing the things that bring in the bigger bucks. And the bigger bucks are made doing jobs for people. Yes, licensing is cool and awesome. And uh, getting your music on Spotify is cool and awesome, but that's all money that you will make later after you make the music. It's gonna could be years down the road. It could be a month down the road with stock. It could be uh, next week with Spotify, depending on how you get paid. But music production is not waiting for a few pennies. Music production is not waiting for a few bucks here and there down the road. Music production is someone gives you a $2,500 deposit to mix an album. Someone gives you a, pays you $500 a month to work for them, uh, producing them and uh, engineering their, their stuff and writing music for them and arranging for them. I'm telling you folks, this is one of those things that um, now that COVID is over, uh, we don't have to sit in our homes. But I'll tell you this, when, even when COVID hit, my production business did not take a hit because I could still do that production business for people over, uh, over Skype and over Zoom. And so we were still able to work 
on music because that was something that people wanted to work on and they had nothing else to work on and they still paid me to work for them. Um, just as a little aside on how I make music income as a music producer and a music company, a music, I do a lot of other things besides music production. I also do artist services and things like that. But music production for artists and music uh, services for artists, that is a constant job. It's a weekly job. It's a monthly job. So I have had people actually pay me somewhere uh, average of probably three seventy five a month for the past, I don't know, I figured it out somewhere in the teens. So probably for about the past 10 years, I have been uh, getting paid by 10 or 20 people three to four hundred dollars a month. And this has been the way that I have paid my bills. So uh, you can do it the old fashioned way, which is say, hey, we're going to do a project. Um, it's going to cost ten thousand dollars for me to record your entire album. Uh, you can pay me a two twenty five hundred dollar deposit and then pay me another twenty five hundred when this happens and when this happens, when this happens. So all of that can be uh, done any way you want to. But I tell you, I I got onto monthly pricing for clients. And not only is it good for you because you're getting monthly, I have them pay me right on the first. So it's almost like a regular job. And uh, it's not only good for you, it's sometimes good for them to be able to split payments up into a monthly payment rather than split things up uh, in big, huge chunks that are hard for them to come up with. Um, Giovanni says, Eric, I'm really interested in that. I've been promoting my studio, but so far I have not gotten any calls, any tips to start as a music producer. Yes, first, make sure you have a great website, a really great website. And the thing the great website should do most of all is show people what you've done because people will come to you for what you have done because they want that for themselves. So to me, this is a very important part. Uh, make sure that you are starting a great website. It's one of the things that we have all of our students do at this recording school I work on. One of the main things we have them do is build a Wix site so that they can show prospective clients uh, these, their, their work and work has always got me more work. Uh, and to some extent, the licensing stuff I do now, people hear that and say, Oh, can you produce for me like that? I'm also considering, uh, a, a new mix service, a new, uh, production service for people who are wanting to get into licensing and stock. Uh, I'm still thinking about that, but, uh, if you're interested in something like that, let me know. And if you're interested in, in doing some work for me in something like that, let me know. Because I'm, I'm, I will be subbing it all out. I don't have time to do it myself. But uh, yeah, that's the first one, uh, Giovanni, is to make a site, a great site. And, min, and, and with a great page of music that's easy for people to hear. And then a contact page. Also, if you could have a, a page on the site that has uh, quotes from people who worked with you. And they really love what you've done. You just got to build that up. And that is the way to get more music production clients. Um, we're going to talk about this in just a minute, Got Reality, about uh, performing and stuff like that. I think you still can perform. It's a harder thing to do. Uh, John Michael says, uh, do you use Dropbox for working with mixing for clients? Absolutely. Yeah, Dropbox is the main way that I send any file to any client, for sure. So music production, um, I, I'm getting ready. That's probably my next ebook is how you can build a music production business. And I think that is the one that's needed next. It may not be the one everybody wants. You probably want a book about how to get, or a course about, you know, how to get more into sync licensing, how to do, I've got sync licensing ebooks. I've got, um, uh, stock music ebooks. E you can find both of those at makemusicincome.com. But, uh, I think music production and, and going alongside music production is another income stream that, uh, that goes right with it, and that is live music production. If you are at all talented in mixing, then you can mix live and you can work at shows, you, not as the artist, but as the uh, guy getting paid at the board. This is one of the main income streams we push with our students at our recording school so that they learn live production and show production and so that they can go out and, and do the sound for live events. One of them is probably staring a lot of you in the face, and that is uh, churches that have live music production every single weekend, and they need people on the board. And I know this because I've twice worked at churches as the music director, and I had to have a qualified person on that board that we paid uh, sometimes hundreds of dollars a day to be there. And sometimes these churches have two services, three services through the weekend, and they are paying people to be at that board, to be mixing 
that what is going on to be mixing all the instruments, vocals, and all that kind of stuff. And then they have also people who are doing the PowerPoints and people are doing the graphics and videos and all that kind of stuff. There is money to be made. Uh, I'm not saying go make money off the church, but there is money to be made in live production. Um, every restaurant who has music, every bar who has DJs, and they have people, uh, bands, and all that kind of stuff. Somebody's got to be mixing that. And the band doesn't always bring their own mixing person. So this is another thing to be looking at for uh, to add to your full-time music production. Um, so uh, why isn't my thing working here? All right. Um, and uh, GR says, gee, that sounds like a great niche, helping mix for people in the stock sync community. Might look into that. You should. Uh, somebody's got to do it. And uh, the only problem with sync and stock that's different than working for, like, say, an artist is that the sync and stock people are not going to make that money for a while. But at the same time, I think a lot of people are dabbling so much and they're not having luck with sync or stock uh, getting their music into music libraries, probably because of their production skills. So having someone who can produce for them, um, you'll have to do it rather cheaply. And you might even be, uh, it might, if it's a sync thing, you might even want to get into uh, deals with people to get some uh, part of the royalties. Uh, but that can be negotiated. Um, Mix says, I do very few favors. I would rather try trading a service or a piece of gear. If someone is vested with you, it turns out better. Yeah, I agree. I do not do favors. I do not do, uh, as a music producer, I do not do work on spec. In other words, ooh, I'll do this work for you, and hopefully you'll make some money with it as an artist or as in licensing, and then hopefully I'll get 5% of that down the road. I, that is no way to make music income. That is no way to, uh, to do what we're talking about here, which is full-time music income. Full-time music income does not come from, uh, from hoping someone is going to pay you one day. Full-time music income comes from qualified clients that pay you money, uh, hopefully in sync, hopefully in stock, hopefully in stock. But when you're doing, oh, or in Spotify, but when you're doing music production, live music production, live music production, guess what? You get paid that night. I, I have colleagues that work at the school I work at, and they get 500 bucks a night to mix certain bands. And so, folks, if you are looking for full-time music income, you, you might need to get off your hands and go out and do some work uh, that gets you paid. So uh, live production is one of those things that almost in any town you're at, somebody is needed somewhere to run the board for a band, for a, a, a bar, for a hotel, for a church. Um, I think uh, somebody just said something about that. Um, yeah, uh, Rhett said, there is big money in churches today. Also, if you know what you're doing, you can make big money installing PA and lights and video. Yes, and churches are one of those places that employ people to install PA, lights, video, music, all that kind of stuff to make sure the music sounds great. And bars are paying for this too. Restaurants are paying for this too. Uh, facilities are paying for this too. Uh, people need people to come in and install all this kind of stuff. Um, so, and, and yeah, and, and GR agrees churches are a solid store, source of income. I think people people get scared of churches and they get scared to walk into a place where uh, they're not quite sure about what they believe and what the church believes and that there's going to be a lot of weirdos in there. Uh, I would say there's probably not as many, uh, there's as, as many weirdos in the church as there is in a bar. So if you don't have any problem going to a bar to do uh, music work, you're probably not going to have that much problem in church. Everybody is weird. So uh, again, it's not about how weird people are. It's about being paid and, and having more income sources that are music-based, that you love. And at worst, a live music gear, uh, gig is going to be your time in trade out for money. Uh, so that's okay because otherwise you're going to be trading that time out by sitting at home or sitting at your job. And wouldn't you rather sit at a music job that was paying you that night uh, or working for a music client that is paying you? Yes, not as fun to do music production necessarily for a client rather than doing your own music production, but probably will pay you faster if not right up front. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, someone earlier, I think it was, I um, uh, can't remember your name, um, Got Reality said, um, things have changed. I used to make a full-time income just from performing in fancy hotels and clubs in the 70s and 90s. 
same. Uh, I I made four hundred bucks a week uh, re, uh, playing at a small little uh, lounge uh, at a hotel uh, early on in my career, and um, it it was uh, it was what it was. I could play really whatever I wanted to, and uh, I, I think that is coming back. And I think a lot of people um, are are trying to. Uh, run away from the music artist side, but this is still a place where you can make money. I know that there are a lot of bands around that are are wedding bands that are focused on doing events like weddings and parties and things like that. And these bands are making bank and the people doing their live music production and doing their live mixing are making bank. And so if you are at all interested in creating live music and 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 building it but here's the, here's the thing about being an artist, and this also goes for music production. This goes for everything, actually. Everything that I've been talking about, sync, stock, Spotify, music production, live production, and being a music artist. The secret is having great people around you. We tend to be very insular and solo on things. And folks, if you want to be paid better, get better people to be with you involved in what you're doing, not just being an artist and getting great people in your band or getting great producers or getting great um, uh, mix people in your live events. All of these, all of these things, sync licensing, one of the secrets of my sync licensing is not that I am so great, uh, I'm pretty great, but I, it's not that as much as it is the amazing people from Nashville I use, the amazing vocalists I use, uh, great engineers that I use every step I'm using as high quality as I can use. It's been my secret for the past 20 years and why I have made uh, a full-time music income. I didn't make full-time music income by just sitting in this room and cranking out a few things. I made it by leaving my hometown and going to Nashville and meeting all the people I need to make and networking and then working my butt off with, on a website and then making sure that I was doing a blog all the time and, and putting videos out and, and just continuing to put client albums out. And every client album I made in Nashville with all the great players was the next thing that I could show the next client who wanted to pay 2,500 bucks or 10,000 bucks to make an album or whatever. Great quality work, finished work begets more great quality work that you can get and get paid for. It's, it's, it's not a secret that if you do great work, someone is going to want to hire you to do great work for them. And so this absolutely falls into the music production side. It also falls into being a great music artist and having great people around you. And I think we are a little too comfortable now sitting in our little rooms and playing with our music to put on stock music libraries. Not that that's not a cool thing. I do it too. I've been putting stuff out to stock recently, and I still make a little bit of an income from that. But being a music artist is, I think we are all music artists at heart, whether we want to admit it or not. And there is an income source there from live gigs, but also from Spotify, and also from uh, other things that might come from our artistry. And again, this is, goes back to why we need to be putting stuff on Spotify. We need to be proud of the work that we do and not just throwing it up to a little library, but putting on Spotify and, uh, and then being the artist. And it's hard to be the artist, right? It's, it's who wants to say, hey, look at me, hey, look at me. Nobody wants that. But at the same time, we want people to hear the songs. We want people to that know us, that don't know us, that we want people to be enjoying this music. That's why we make it. We hope and pray that people like our music and not just music supervisors, not just uh, people at stock libraries, but people that are sitting there listening. We want to really um, please them. And again, with being a music artist, you get paid that night. You're not getting paid down the road for a gig you're doing tonight. You're getting paid tonight for that gig. And that is money that goes right to pay what bills that you have right then. And this is the kind of thing that uh, you've got to do. Uh, Arco says, that's true. We love playing something with hands. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, I just think that, you know, we, we've got to pay attention to our music artist side. Because if you're looking for something that's going to make you money now, a gig tonight or a gig tomorrow night or a gig this weekend is going to make you money now. 
money that can pay a bill now. The water bill gets paid because you got paid tonight. And I think this is really important that we we focus on the things that are going to pay us now, not the things that might pay us in two years and five years. Yes, it is really cool and really uh, awesome to think about your music in a TV show. But uh, also, that money doesn't always come right after you make it versus doing music production getting paid before you work with deposits sometimes. Music artists sometimes get paid deposits to come and play a party. Um, I know uh, show bands that uh, they're a specialty band for weddings and parties. They get paid bef- They get paid a deposit. My daughter is a photographer. She gets paid a hefty deposit before she, when she says yes to a wedding. There is money up front in some of these things. And so uh, very important that you remember the upfront money, the night, the, the even, uh, uh, the even, you know, uh, the, the money that, that comes just from being there that night. And, and that's not always something that happens, especially in licensing and things like that. The other thing I want to talk about here is publishing and royalties. And I know publishing and royalties is a broad subject. I have videos about this, but um, and, and content ideas included in this, PROs included in this. But this is something that brings me a good amount every year. I think royalties uh, royalties are starting to increase, of course, now that I'm in sync licensing and stock music licensing. But um, this is part of the income streams, maybe not the biggest part of the income streams. In a minute, before I end this video, I'll tell you what the biggest income streams are for me. And I thank you, by the way, if you've been watching through this whole thing and hanging out. Um, this is important stuff because, you know, this whole channel is called Make Music Income. So I felt like it was time to come on and talk about uh, music income in a real sense and not just in, ooh, you could do sync licensing, ooh, you could do stock, but the real the reality of how I'm going to pay the bills every month, and that is hustling your butt off to make sure all these income streams are coming. And uh, sometimes that means having a, another job that's not music related. But if you work hard, I, I went back to school to, uh, to get my degrees and a master's degree so that I could do some teaching. We'll talk about that in a minute. But publishing and royalties are something that just go along with all these other things, especially the licensing things, especially the Spotify things. Um, it, sometimes in music production, you can get involved in the royalty stream of, an, of the artist you're producing or the client you're producing. Um, these days I would suggest it, especially if you do end up working for people who are wanting to put their music into television and film. Um, it could be a way. The problem is you're going to, uh, give up some money that you would be paid up front or paid for the job by say, uh, by getting some of the back end. that's for the artist or for the client to say, Hey, I'll give you, and I do this too. I'll, I will offer singers a percentage of the income of the royalties instead of, uh, instead of the money up front, because I'm trying to save money because sync licensing and stock licensing don't necessarily pay up front. So I am trying to, I'm going to be waiting for the money. The people who are working with me and partnering with me could also wait for the money. So this is another way that you can make income, uh, in, in this world is to, uh, is to, is to work for people for publishing for royalties and work for them for the back end of things and, and get involved in the income stream, especially if you know this person is having a lot of success getting their stuff into sync licensing, or you just think they're really great and that there is a good chance that this stuff could do something. This could be another income stream for you. And you, it, with p- publishing and royalties, you really have to think long term. You can't be thinking, oh, what's it going to make me tomorrow? If you need money for rent tomorrow, this ain't going to pay it. But it is something that uh, it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. You get those publishing and royalties set up, and every year the, you're seeing pieces of pennies and dollars and, and tens of dollars and hundreds of dollars come in. And uh, this, is the, huh, this is the way, as we say on The Mandalorian uh, in Star Wars these days. This is uh, one of the ways that you're going to make music income be part of your life forever. And that is to be fully ensconced in making sure you're getting publishing and royalties from your projects. Um, And certainly this has a lot to do with sync licensing because this is a big part of it. The back end is a big part of making any consistent income with sync licensing. So um, anyway, that is really what I want to talk about on publishing and royalties. I'm going to answer uh, 
there's a lot of great comments going on here. Uh, Rhett says, if, always get a contract if you do an install. Only work with music stores that warranty products. So Rhett is really involved in making music income as a installer, as a music uh, professional. And, um, and Giovanni says, in a lot of you videos on YouTube are recommending to focus in one or two main genres, either if you're an artist, composer, music producer. Would you recommend this or have to be good in everything? Well, I don't know if you have to be good in everything, Giovanni, but I think you probably have to just about do everything. Um, and I think you're probably going to gravitate towards one or the other as your main thing. My main thing is as a composer nowadays, but it was as a producer. Um, if I wanted to make the most money now, I would focus on music production still and music services for artists and for clients. That is still where the most money is. Uh, at, at least money that comes in right now. If you're if you're trying to make money now, the things that I've been talking about: music production, live production, being a music artist, uh, but especially these two, I think, or or any kind of services you can provide, like Rhett's talking about providing services of installation and um, uh, other kinds of consulting and things you can do for people. That is where that is where the bigger money is. Again, it's always going to be where you are in life, what kind of money you need now. If you don't need a lot of money, I know a lot of people who are doing stock music as a side kind of fun hobby. And uh, if they make a little, that's great. And I think that's a great thing to do. In some ways, I do stock music this way. I know some people who really focus on sync licensing and are, are meaning for this to be one of their main incomes in five or 10 years. And I fall into this category. My goal is that sync licensing is bringing me five to... Ten thousand dollars a quarter, and uh, and and is a really nice quote unquote retirement income, and uh, and I just continue to compose and put more stuff out. So to me, that's that's my goal. And so, but some people might be on the music artist bent and say, "Hey, listen, my life, I exist to get out of bed every day to go play gigs and get paid and sell music on Spotify and keep my fans." interested all the time and continue to put out new stuff and continue to make money as a music artist. There are still people doing this. We tend to think that nobody is doing this anymore, that COVID killed it all. Uh, I was talking to Steve yesterday as we were shooting our podcast, uh, Steve Bedall, who is my, my podcast partner, and he's got a big gig tomorrow night. Huge. It's sold out in, in Vancouver with all these bands coming in. Live production, music artists are still a thing. And they, believe me, they're getting paid tomorrow night. They're not like Hoping, hoping they get paid down the line some royalties. No, this is live music, live paid. And guess what else is happening that night? People are making money from the live production. The 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 house is making money from from the tickets. Someone is being paid to produce and and mix these um, these concerts and all this kind of stuff. So there is money being made by people who are at these things where artists are. Uh, and and so I think that. Uh, back to your question, do I recommend all things? Of course, I always recommend doing everything, but not everybody is able to. And some, sometimes you just have to choose the places that, number one, are going to be where your heart is and where you want to focus your time. And number two, what is making you the money to pay your bills if you're going to depend on this as money. And so publishing royalties is a long topic and, and obviously a, a long game in the back end. Um, but the, the last thing I really want to talk about here is something I've got into in the past year, not anywhere as attractive or as interesting to people as being a music artist or being a music producer or being a, a sync licensing uh, person. But that is teaching, uh, whether you're teaching lessons to people and you have your own 20 students or so that pay you a hundred bucks a, a week or a hundred bucks a month or whatever, and you have that two to four thousand dollars coming in from from uh, all that work or you're teaching at a school and like me and you are getting a salary and benefits uh, which is something I haven't had for a long time so um, part of my income now is this teaching job at least for the time being and it's providing some uh, consistency and that is not something that uh, we all have that much in the music business yeah you know, we can talk all day about full-time music income but the truth is that it's not always very full-time. 
It's often very not full time and often not very dependable. But when you have a job where you are teaching people on the weekly basis and they are paying you to be in your studio, uh, in your in your teaching studio, or you are working at a school or a church or someplace where you are teaching music to students, this can be a consistent income every two weeks, like a regular job. Can you imagine uh, that you have um, regular pay like everybody else in the world? Now, the downside is like any job, it's a job. It's uh, You can be as creative as you want as a teacher, but you can't always uh, depend and uh, and make your own hours. Sometimes hours get set in stone and uh, you have to give that time to that job. But teaching is one of those things that, um, and there's a stigma against teaching because they people tend, uh, tend to think, oh, well, if you can't make it, if you can't hack it in the music business, then you must have to go and teach people how to do music. And I think that's a bunch of BS, especially since uh, most jobs, uh, and including the one I'm in, they they don't only prefer, they kind of require that you still are working in music and you're not just um you're not just uh, teaching and teaching something you used to do 20 years ago, but you are actually still doing this now. So uh, I not only teach at my job, I teach here. I'm teaching right now. And I teach on my channel, but I also teach. I also do. I also am making tons of music all the time and putting stuff on Spotify, putting stuff out to sync licensing libraries, putting stuff out to stock music libraries, doing music production, doing music artist work and uh, have tons of publishing and royalties come in. So I think it's important as a, if you're going to teach, if you go, if you want to, number one, be happy. And number two, make money as teaching. You also need to be doing, you can't be teaching without doing because doing brings real world application to the students you're teaching. And, uh, and it's important to your employers that you are somebody who is still doing the thing. And so I think it's really important. All right. If you have any last questions, throw them up. I'm uh, I'm I'm just about done here, and uh, I hope this has been helpful for you to see what it's like to be a full time music person. What it's like to make your entire income from music. Uh, I, and just as a since I promised you, uh, I would tell you what I make my full time income. Obviously, um, my work for clients is still a, a big part of what I do. Probably. 45% of my income to 50% of my income is still services I do for music artists, for um, songwriters, for composers, for beat makers, for all sorts of people that are trying to get going, not including my channel work. Uh, I don't even have my channel on here, but I guess I would include my channel and I would include my job at the recording school that I work at under teaching and those bring in 50% or so of my income. Um, there's probably a, a good five to 10% that come from royalties, that come from Spotify, that come probably 10% uh, to, to 20% now, that come from sync licensing, stock music licensing, Spotify, content ID, which I include kind of in stock music licensing, uh, being a music artist myself and selling stuff on Spotify, and then my publishing and royalties. Those. So as you can see, there's not even four things that I, that I do. Most all of the, I do all of these things. I do sync. Uh, I really focus on sync. I do stock. I do. I get money from Content ID. I get money from Spotify and DSPs. I get money from music producing for clients. I, I don't do much live production on my own. Um, I do. I, I'm a music artist. I have tons of brands on Spotify and uh, websites and videos that I do and take care of growing my music brands. I get royalties every year and uh, from sync and from stock and from. Uh, all the other kinds of things I've had up there for years. And then I get money from teaching, including this channel. So uh, that is kind of how I make full-time income. Hey, there's Dave Croft popping in to say hi. Thanks, Dave, for being here. Another person. You need to be watching and following 52 Qs. What a great resource he is. Excellent video this week. You should absolutely take a look at. Um, great community there. Especially, hey, if you want to be involved in uh in music production and music licensing and uh production music you definitely need to be listening to mr dave uh great podcast by the way this week dave um 
Andreas uh, says, full-time is not a myth. Many friends of mine do it. The question is, do you have to do stuff like teaching, which many don't like as much as playing or composing, or can it be done by producing? It can definitely be done by producing. I've done it for 25 years. It's all I did. I didn't teach a lick other than teaching my clients. But uh, yeah, and Dave really says it here. I'd rather put a full-time income together in all aspects of the music business than being a composer or working retail or something. He means being a composer at the same time as having to work over at JCPenney's and sell, sell suits, which I used to do, by the way, at JCPenney back in the day. But um, yeah, I, I, I think I'm not prepared to just work a regular non-music job and then be a composer on the side. I certainly agree with that, Dave. I don't think I could do that. Um, but uh, Got Reality says, thank you, Eric, for sharing your knowledge. Uh, I've experienced full-time music income my entire life from performing, teaching, and leading worship at church. It is possible and rewarding. Absolutely, uh, it is. Uh, Marty's in the house. Hey, Marty, good to see you. Um, so yeah, uh, you're seeing it here. Um, how, you know, uh, jo Joma says, how could I get more involved in the creative side here in town? Um, start handing out business cards, Joma. Put those business cards together, make that website, and get everybody uh, listening to what you're doing. If you live in Nashville, um, it, it's, yeah, it, Nashville is a tough, a tough beast. However, here's what you need to do living in Nashville. Get people who don't live in Nashville to come to Nashville and pay you. That is the way you do creative living in Nashville. Because I lived in Nashville for, for, for 11 years or 12 years, and uh, that's how I made a living. I made a living selling Nashville. And so I brought them over to Word Music or uh, Dark Horse Recording or something and made people's dreams come true who wanted to come to a music city and be involved. So if you're in Nashville, you need to be uh, uh, bringing people to Nashville and helping them there because uh, I'm telling you that is a way to make income and it worked for me for many years. Um, Mix Club says I've always I always do what it takes to make money. If uh, if you're young, no excuses. If I had the internet when I was oh guess, dude, if we had internet when I was in high school, I would rule the world. Um, I yeah, exactly. He says he got in his car and drove 500 miles to get a song placed. Dude, I would drive to Nashville, uh, back and forth, three and a half hours each way, and uh, just to have a five minute conversation with somebody who was supposedly a music producer uh, or a music publisher and show my songs to them over and over and over again. And that was the only way to get in touch with people. You could send them mail, but you'd never hear back. You could call them, but you'd never get through. You had to go see them in person. And this is still a thing, by the way, um, and goes back to my Nashville comments a minute ago. Uh, John Michael says, any other comments about middlemen such as Taxi a &R? Nope. No. <laughs> There's videos about that on my channel, John. Just go look at those. I'll leave it at that. Uh, I am Yinka from Lagos, Nigeria, and also earn full-time producing, teaching, and stock music. My biggest income has actually come from teaching. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say my biggest income, but I'd say a big part of uh, Dave and I both is our music income from teaching about music and our, using our experience to teach about music. So I think it's very honorable to teach, but I think it's also important for Dave and I both and anybody who is, uh, anybody who you see teaching. And here's the problem. If you're not teaching, if you're teaching and you're not doing, I think it's a problem. Uh, and, and we know a lot of people who we're watching uh, online who are, are teaching things and you're not sure they're doing the thing anymore. And that's when I kind of lose interest in an online teacher or uh, a teacher who is not uh, teaching the thing anymore. I kind of uh, start to tune out because if they're not focused on doing it anymore and they just want to teach about how to do it, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Arco says, you need masters to be a teacher. Um, actually, uh, in, in American colleges, if you want to teach at a four-year college, you need a doctorate. But um, you can teach with a master's. You can teach with a regular bachelor's degree if you have a teaching certificate, but only to certain things. Uh, and I took the master's in order to just learn more because I wanted to. But I definitely think that uh, you've got to uh, have a good education. And I think a master's is probably uh, is, is, is probably needed to move into f being a teacher that is more 
uh, well-rounded than just what you get from a bachelor's degree. Uh, Giovanni says, I'm a full-time private music teacher. I'm not doing anything else. I think this is the easiest way to start making uh, full-time music income in my experience. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I did this for a while before I started teaching at the school I'm at now. And um, it was, uh, I could have expanded that as much as I wanted to as far as individual teaching. It wasn't for me teaching kids and stuff like that. It wasn't as, as interesting to me. Um, but, um, it, it was very profitable and certainly something that you can do either only or alongside of, um, any other work you're doing. Dave says, yep. Full-time teacher at full sale, but also the 52s community. Yeah. You guys don't understand how much teaching that we do in our masterminds and our coaching and our, uh, feedback things and these, in these live videos that we're, that we're just spending hours doing. Uh, and all the time we spend in front of the camera trying to teach, uh, it's, it's certainly um, something that, uh, that you have to do. And like Dave says, yeah, if you want to teach at, a, at an accredited university, full sales accredited university, we just had our asset come the other day and, and look at our, uh, we're also accredited and, and you have to get ready for all that stuff. And yeah, they prefer higher degreed teachers. Um, Mix Club says, I will be a great teacher when I can stay on point. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Yes, I get uh, distracted as well. Squirrel. Um, anyway, great to see you, Dave. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, I think that's about it for me today. I have another uh, podcast to be part of here in a little bit, so I better go get ready for that and get ready to go teach the students and make that music income. So, uh, yeah, it's a full-time music income uh, is to be had. It's not a myth. It is real. And uh, I will go back through this video. If you're catching this later, you should be able to see all the uh, little markers for all the sections about all of these things. I hope it's uh, been helpful and I hope you've learned something. Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, gonna, gonna say goodbye to everybody. Um, <sighs> Marty, this is not a hockey broadcast. I don't know anything about ho hockey, eh? Uh, let's move on. <laughs> Say goodbye, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Leave more questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them later. Good to see everybody. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.